What's going on guys? So today I'm going to be doing an oil change on my 2016 WRX. Same thing should apply for the 2015s of course. It's actually super easy to do. Um, now they've got the filter on the top of the engine and unlike previous models, the tray beneath the car down below doesn't cover the drain bolt like it used to. So you used to have to take off the entire plastic under tray. Now you don't. So it's super easy. Let's get started. All right, so after talking to some friends of mine and doing a little bit of research online, this is the oil that I chose to use for my first oil change. Uh, this is the Pennzoil Platinum 5W30, and it meets all of the OEM specifications. It might not focus, um, but it's good. And then I've got the OEM Subaru oil filter with a crush gasket. Um, these are the part numbers if you want to see them. And then I just got a new funnel for putting oil into the car because it's always a bit easier with a funnel. All right, so as you saw, I've got the car up on ramps. These are just some race ramps. They're about $50, super cheap, and I love them for oil changes because it's really quick and easy to get the car up, and you've got enough room to get underneath and uh, do any work there. Um, I've also got a drain pan here to put the oil into. And then because it's a little bit dark, I've got this new LED work light, thanks to my pops who got me this for Christmas. Gonna plug this in, one-handed. It's got a little thing on the front. Awesome, that is nice and bright, wow. I'm gonna use this a lot for detailing. I'll set this down beneath. And then we're gonna get a creeper just to get underneath, that's easiest. Over the bike. All right, so on the 2015 and 2016 WRXs, the oil filter is now on top, which makes it super easy. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the oil filter. Um, I used an oil filter wrench with kind of a rubber piece around it to loosen it because it was on there quite tight from the factory. I'm just gonna spin it off, and then when I lift it up, I'm gonna let any excess oil in here drain out into the bottom. There was none. So easy, wow. Easier than I expected. So remove that, dispose of this properly. I'm just gonna put it here in this uh, cloth for now. Place it to the side. All right, so next step, the biggest step you're gonna have to do is drain the oil. Now I'm gonna use a 9 16 um, socket here. And it's a bigger breaker bar just because right now it's on there really tight from the factory. And I know they paint over top of the bolts, so it's gonna be a little tricky to uh, get off initially. But you're gonna go down there and take it off. So space is super limited now under this car. It's much bigger than my old 2013 STI was. Um, but what I'm going to do is, here's the oil drain bolt. It's really easy to get to. Subaru was nice enough with this generation to place that behind the skid plate down here. And I never noticed before, but it looks like they've got a nice metal plate down here. It's nice. Um, small bolt here, you just have to take that off. And then you have your oil drain pan beneath it right here. So I'm just going to hold the oil in this. Make sure you put it a little bit to the side because it doesn't come straight down, it kind of shoots out to the side. Um, and then what we're going to do is just start loosening it with the breaker bar and then after it's loose we'll finish it by hand. That was really easy to loosen. Now it's a good idea just to keep some of these cloths on hand just so they don't get oil all over your hands but we're going to start loosening it now by hand. Just make sure you don't lose this bolt. That is why I have gloves on. <laughs> A lot more came out than I expected, not like my older car. So we're just going to let the oil drain out now for a few minutes until it kind of stops. The new FA20 engines hold about 5.1 liters of oil, so we'll let that all drain out. Alright, so once the oil stopped dripping from there, we're ready to put the drain bolt back onto the oil pan at the bottom. And it's very important to make sure you put a new uh, crush gasket on there. This is one here. Now before we put this onto the oil drain bolt here, you have to remove the old gasket that's on there. And it's really hard to see, but it's painted on here. Um, you can see the silver part right here where the X-Acto knife is, but it actually goes down beneath that under this spot here. I was trying to pry it off here initially, 
um, but very important, you have to actually push this down and pry this off from there. And you'll see it comes off then really easy. Just make sure you're going from the bottom of it because I wasn't initially. So remove this and then we can put the new one on here just like that. There we go. All right, so beneath the car now, the oil pan here, you can see where it's draining out. Um, stripping just a little bit, but we can put it back on now. So I've got the drain bolt with that new crush gasket. We're just gonna hand tighten it into the hole now. Kind of tricky to see in the dark, but just get that back on there, hand tightened for now. All right. All right, so now that we've got the oil drain bolt back on the pan there, we're gonna torque it to the correct spec. Uh, 32.5 foot-pounds of torque. So just using a manual torque wrench here. All right, so there we go, 32.5 Put tons of torque. Oil drain bolt is back on the car. All right, now that I've got the oil drain bolt back on the car, I'm gonna work on getting the filter on the car. All right, so first we have to prepare the oil filter. So just take off the plastic here. Before we put the new oil filter back onto the car, um, we wanna lubricate the seal first. Now I'm gonna do this the very proper way. Some people do it differently and I'll tell you the truth. Most cases I would just put a bit of the old oil onto here move it around and then seal it up. But to do this the proper way, we're gonna pull the seal out of the oil filter here. Just hold it in our hand, we don't wanna get it dirty down there. Um, take off the cap from your new oil and just put a little bit onto the filter here. And then we're just gonna push the seal back into position here. So now our oil filter is nice and sealed, ready to be put onto the car. All right, so now that we've got a nice seal on the oil filter, we can put it back on the car here. Start turning it on. So when you're putting the oil filter back on the car, it's important to not over tighten it. A lot of people will just crank it on there and that'll end up doing the opposite of what you want and it might leak. Um, on the side of the filter here actually, it says to hand tighten it until it's made contact with the bottom. And then you wanna turn it three quarters of a turn further. And that'll make it nice and snug on there and it should be perfect. So we're, we're gonna just turn it here till it's contact has been made, which we, we feel contact has been made now. It's not turning easily. And then we're gonna hand tighten it three quarters of a turn. So we can do one quarter, two quarter, and then three quarter. And there we go, nice and snug on there. It's not overly tight, we should be good to go now. So the last step is just putting the oil back into the car. So we're gonna take off the engine oil fill cap here, and just set this aside. And I picked up a new funnel, I'm just gonna place that there, make sure it's clean inside. So the manual says you need to use 5.4 quarts of oil, uh, which for me is 5.1 liters. So even with the funnel, you do have to be very careful pouring the oil in. A little bit of spillage. But imagine if you didn't have this uh, funnel right now. <laughs> Look at the uh, angle at which I have to pour this in from. It's pretty high up. It's not even in the frame. <laughs> All right, so after you've put in your five liters, you just wanna to top it up with about 100 milliliters extra to be 5.1. Um, that's what this needs, about 5.4 quarts, and you should be good to go. Let's just put your oil cap back on tightly. Now we're good to lower the car from the ramps and start it up. Just to recap, we put the oil back in the car, uh, 5.1 liters, which is approximately 5.4 quarts for the US. Um, tighten the oil cap back up started the car, took it down from the ramps, let it idle for about a minute, shut the car off, 
and let your car sit for five minutes so that the oil kind of goes back down to the bottom. Then you want to check the dipstick to make sure that the oil is at the proper level in between the two dots on the dipstick. Super easy to check. Um, and after that, you're good to go. Monitor your car, make sure uh, nothing is dripping off the bottom. You want to check down beneath. Uh, make sure that bolt, nothing's leaking from the oil drain bolt. If you torqued it properly, you shouldn't have any troubles with that. Uh, and that's about it, guys. All right, guys, so that is it. That's how to do an oil change. Very simple. Um, save yourself however much it costs to get an oil change done. The oil is expensive as it is, so paying for a half hour to an hour of labor um, at, your, at your dealership, unless you negotiated that in for free or something, um, it's super easy to do on your own. Right now I'm just going to head out and dispose of the oil properly at the local uh, fire station here that allows us to do that. Uh, if you do do oil change, make sure you dispose of it properly, don't just dump it somewhere. So I just put the old oil back into the jugs. That one's I like, got a lot more in it, but. So that's it. That's how easy it is to do an oil change on a 2016 or 2015 WRX. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment below and I will answer all of them. And if you like this video and you want to see more videos about my WRX, uh, feel free to subscribe by clicking right here. And thanks for watching.